Hello everybody, my name is Roman and it's Marketing Watch House and welcome back on my channel. Today we have the second series of GA4 to BigQuery import and we have an extremely interesting topic actually, how to query these results. So there are two big problems. First is that you need to access it by date and you will not find the partition date uh, field there. Um, everything is going to be just a string. As you can see here, the event data is string. And the second problem is that you need to unnest. So let's first tackle the problem of uh, dates. So if you work already with the GA360 data, it actually works almost the same way. So you also have the today's intro date and you have this um, icon that represents several tables inside the same cluster and you need to access them using the table suffix but unless you already work with this it's kind of complicated because they never mentioned where this data actually like located and how you should work with this so this is what we're going to try to solve today uh, to access this data you can just push the query table the problem is okay the problem is that you're only going to access the today's or yesterday's data depending on what you're actually querying and it's kind of complicated to access the previous date data because here you have the date inside the table name. So to solve that problem the first and simplest solution you can just put the star uh, somewhere and in this case I will access all tables that starts with 2020. And it will actually aggregate, like, union all these tables and give me an access to them. The second thing, of course, that comes to mind that you can, for example, say I want to access all tables that come in 2020 in December and so on and so on. The problem, though, is if you're building some solution that's going to work on its own, you, you just cannot come back there and, like, all the time change this. It's just not going to work. So what we need to do, we need to have an access to dynamically change, for example, for the last 90 days or last 180 days. To do so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce the table suffix. First of all, I get rid of all the dates, but I can keep some of them. It doesn't matter. I just want to access the whole, um, the rest part of the name of the table, which is, uh, in this case, would be 2020, um, 12, 19, for example. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say where underscore table suffix equals um, 2020-12-09. Of course, I misspelled it, but that's fine. In that case, I can dynamically access this data using this star. So whatever you you hide under the star is going to go to the new variable that is called table suffix and you can work with this variable. The next thing you can do is to convert this into date and to do so we're going to use parse date and the format is going to be year and then month and then date and then it's going to come from table suffix and we're going to say that it should be equal to 2020-1209. If we run that, this becomes the, the date dimension and date dimension actually allows us to use the old, old time um, functions. For example, I can now say the table suffix should be more than date add and then current date interval 3 day. So give me the information for the past three days and this is how simple it is. It's actually an amazing thing. It's just, I am so confused that it's so difficult to find this information anywhere. So whatever you hide inside table suffix is going to change it. So in case you, for example, do 2020, then you need to parse as month and date because you will not have the year information there, which is going to be confusing because parse date requires to have a year. But that's that's all the things you can work you can work with them. Another thing you also can do, for example, if you have uh, intra tables, which are the, the the streaming events, you also can say that and table suffix not like and then say intra intra. In that case, you will also skip the today's data, the streaming part, because whenever you have streaming, you usually have the 
current streaming table and then at the end of the day it will be converted to the permanent table and then the streaming is going to be recreated for another streaming data. So the last thing I wanted to show you is how it actually gonna look like. So if I do select and then I say distinct event date, then I will uh, I will sh I should have yeah last three days, but today's data is not there. Uh, and again, if you need to, you can use this one, this function, but instead of table su suffix, you do event date, and then you should have an access to the time date time variable i mean just date it is here it is i hope it helps you it helps you subscribe to this channel if you have problem with anything just leave a comment there we'll try to find something for you you can also reach out to me on linkedin and i will try to create more videos for you soon see you and bye bye